Are you a resident of Kenosha? Yes, I live in Kenosha. Oh, that's good. I like hearing when the police officers live here because I feel like it. Um, they they are more attached to their community. Yeah. So then they like they're not going home to a different city, and then they're like just like forgetting about the real. You know what I mean? Just like disconnect the disconnection there. Yeah, I don't absolutely. Know. I agree with you. Um, I live in Kenosha. Uh, my family lives here. Uh, my kids are going to school and you know, Kenosha um, Unified School District. Mm -hmm. So they're public school kids. And um, I didn't grow up in Kenosha, but okay. um, I've been in Kenosha for over 20 years now. So Kenosha is my home um, and I care a lot about the community. Yeah, yeah. You know? What made you want to get into um, uh, being a police officer? Yeah, it's an interesting question. You would think it'd be more of a pretty straightforward answer, but it's not. Um, I'm not like the, I guess the uh, normal officer could tell you like, oh, since I was a kid, I wanted to be a cop and, you know, I played those games. That wasn't me. That wasn't my story. I, it wasn't, it may have been the furthest thing from my mind. Um, but coming out of high school, I joined the military. I joined the Coast Guard. And uh, in the Coast Guard, I did um, law enforcement and I did search and rescue and I did uh, mm -hmm. firefighting and just a lot of experiences that I had in my time in the Coast Guard. And I came across a time where uh, once I was married and had a, had a young family growing and my wife was going to college and she comes to me and she says, I don't want this military life forever. I don't want to move every four years uh, to a different location. Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, uh, settle down somewhere and have some roots and, you know, focus on my career and not just your career. So uh, I had a choice to make. I was like, I can't stay here because she's not going to follow me everywhere I go. And uh, <clears throat> in the Coast Guard, the way it works is that every three or four years, you usually get a new assignment. You get sent somewhere else. So I can be in um, Kenosha for four years. And then the next four years, I can be in Alaska. And she just uh, didn't want something like that. So. And how long are the terms? Are they only four? Like you could stop at four years? Like say, like say, you know, say, I don't know how to explain it, but basically like, do you have to sign up for a longer period of time? Like, or I thought you could sign up for like two years. Yeah, they're they're short they're short term contracts and they're long term contracts. Oh, um, but what you were doing? But there's also billets. So uh, in the Coast Guard, there's uh, a billet. So your specific job um, is has an expiration date. So oh. uh, if you if you were to get uh, stationed, let's say in Milwaukee in the Coast Guard, you're only going to be in Milwaukee for four years, and then you'll have to go somewhere else. So even if you have a six-year contract with the Coast Guard, uh, you don't have a six-year contract with Milwaukee. You're gonna you work for the U United States Coast Guard, not the Milwaukee Coast Guard. If right, that makes right. Sense. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. I didn't I did not know that when they they come to your high school and tell you about the Coast Guard, they're the, they tell you you could sign up for two years. Like, well, you can't. I know, but like they didn't go into that whole. I mean, I would have liked to have known that. You know what I mean? Because I even contemplated it for a little bit. Yeah. But so I'm sorry. Can, so. That's kind of how you led to. Yeah, it, it did in a roundabout way. I, I spoke to um, some people that I met in the Coast Guard who uh, were reservist, and um, they, you know they they're part time, not full time people. So they they come once a month, one weekend a month, and then two weeks a year, just like uh, reserves in any other military service. Mm -hmm. And some of them were police officers, and I would uh, engage them in conversations. And I would also I was uh, stationed full time in Milwaukee. And I worked really close with the uh, with the Milwaukee um, Water Patrol. They they have a boat in Milwaukee, uh, a couple of boats, and they they work really close with the Coast Guard, with the law enforcement and uh, the search and rescue. So, in talking to them and getting to know them better, we started to get into some real conversations about some things that were happening and um, how I felt or how I viewed law enforcement growing up was kind of different. I was getting a different view point by being able to sit down with them I, I had this unique opportunity to to have these uh conversations kind of like we're having now and um and i learned a lot and then they started uh they started to recruit me a little bit they said uh you know law enforcement needs somebody like you uh, law enforcement needs somebody who knows how to talk to people who, who knows how to treat people with uh dignity with respect uh, yeah. no matter what you can still do your job you have a job to do if somebody uh, commits a crime they have to they have to be arrested, uh, but 
the way that you talk to people goes a very long way. And there's a lot of officers who do that really well. And there's some officers who don't do that well at all. Mm -hmm. And um, so they convinced me, they said, uh, you can complain about what you don't like in law enforcement, or you can be a part of the solution and join up. And it, it kind of hit me. And then that combined with my wife saying, you know, I'm not going to move every four years. Um, I thought, let's let's give it a try. So I applied for the Kenosha Police Department and, and I got hired. So um, when was that? Do you, like what year you think? That was 2008. Okay, so you've been you've been with KPD since two thousand eight. Yes, that's like I don't know how many years, but that's uh, coming up on thirteen years. Wow! Yeah. yeah, congrats. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. So, did you feel like it was something that, like, you could be happy doing for the rest of your life? Um, you know, it uh, law enforcement is the kind of job that you really don't know what it is until you do it. Mm. Um, you you watch TV shows and you even the reality shows like Cops or The First 48 or things like that. And you think that you know what you're getting into. But once you're actually into it, you you find out very fast that is, there's a lot more to it. And there's there's a lot of hats that you wear as a law enforcement officer. So I would say um, yes and no is the answer to that question. There are some days where I'm I'm very happy and I'm pleased with the work that I do and what I was able to do for somebody. And there's other days where you're just um, exhausted and tired and you've been uh, in dangerous situations and you're thinking to yourself, you know, do I want to keep doing this forever? So yeah. uh, it's, it's um, I think if anybody's being honest, you, everybody who's in the job and who's doing that correctly, you probably have a love hate relationship with law enforcement, I think. And well, a couple of things. That's what, first of all, I'm glad that you mentioned the first 48 because I was going to ask you, like, is it anything? I used to love that show. Yeah. So it's probably not really like they, they so it, dramatize it a little bit. They certainly dramatize it. They, they want to make it entertaining, but there's there's a lot of truth to it. Mm. Um, it's uh, it's usually some raw footage that they have there. And those things are um, there's a lot of truth to it. Uh, there's there's truth to the. To the notion that in the first 48 hours of a homicide um, are the most important for, for finding and preserving information before it goes away. Right. And uh, talking to people who are willing to talk when it's fresh versus uh, down the road when they thought about it and maybe uh, rethink their position on whether or not they want to cooperate. So, um, yeah, there's truth to it, but it's not the whole story. Obviously, you don't um, solve a murder in 45 minutes uh you don't solve any case that fast so uh there there's a lot more going on but there's truth to to some of the shows okay and so then that meant it leads into my next question which was like so could you kind of like describe like for the people that say they know nothing about they don't even know what a detective is sure like you know walk me through it a little bit please. yeah so um let's start with the baseline of knowing what a, what a patrol officer is and what they do okay. so um, to just give an imaginary situation for a patrol officer, let's say a patrol officer responds to um, a complaint for for theft. Um, a store would say somebody came into the store and stole something from the store. They took it without paying for it. There's a retail theft. So it's a pretty low level crime. The officer will go to the store and take a take a statement from the people who saw something. Uh, they'll they'll collect any evidence that they can collect at the scene, and if they're not able to to find or locate the person who committed the theft, then they'll write a report, and that report gets in front of me as a detective. So, as a detective, I'm going to look for more information. I'm going to um, look for more evidence and try to to find the person who committed that crime. So, a detective, in a sense, is a uh, you know, it's not you're not necessarily the first responder anymore. You're you're the second responder in a sense. So I will go behind the work that the initial officers did and uh, do any further work that needs to be done to to uh, solve a crime. Mm. Or um, I, I think one of the one important thing to to mention about what detectives do is that um, they're not looking for guilt or innocence, and that, that's that's an important thing that a lot of people don't know. Um, they are looking for the truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's just as important for a detective to uh, to eliminate a suspect in a, in a certain situation as it is for them to find the correct person. It's it's uh, many times uh, 
a victim or even a police officer might think that they know who did a thing and the detective has to follow the evidence and figure out if that's true or not. It's, it's very important to, to, uh, I, I guess in a sense, vindicate a person who's not, who's not guilty of something to, to have that evidence show, um, that they had nothing to do with this crime. That, right. That's an important part of the job that gets missed. Mm. That's really interesting actually. Cause I never, I never even thought about it that way. Like that, I would just say, yeah, you guys are like truth seekers. Yeah, like you're, absolutely. You're just looking for the truth. Yeah. Like, it's almost like, yeah, I don't know. That, that's really cool. I, mean, that, I like the, the way that you put it like that. 